I went from 5k to 150k followers on Instagram within 30 days. However, this did not come easy and wasn't an overnight success. Over the past 10 years, I tried a lot when it comes to creating content and I got frustrated countless times along the way. And yeah, I just wanted to give up as a creative and be done with it. And then last year in 2023, I came across the following concept, which opened up my entire brain once and for all. You are the niche. In this video, I'm going to share with you five tips around content creation and what I would do if I would start an account on Instagram in 2024. So let's get straight into it. Tip number one I have for you is you have to understand the current landscape. Social media is changing all the time and too many are still not aware that creating content or content creation is a legitimate business. It's something that will not go away in the future and at the same time you need to have a clue where attention is shifting towards because it's always shifting over and over again. Each platform has its own rules but they all have the algorithm basically that takes care of how content is distributed. Now when we talk about attention and how attention moves on these platforms then it's very important for you that you are taking this seriously and you are actually adapting over and over and realizing that there is not just one constant and you are figuring out the algorithm once and you're set for your entire content creation game. How attention works on these platforms, especially on Instagram, is shifting. It's, it could be this today and it's gonna be that tomorrow and you have to be very aware of how content and how human psychology and behavior is basically acting around the content that is produced. The algorithm is always changing and if you are not aware of that, then you will probably create content that does not have the most potential to reach a lot of people. However, also not focus only on the algorithm because that will A, drive you nuts and B, it's just not fun to always hunt trends and try to actually you know, keep up with that game. But it's still a very important factor when it comes to how you create content because you need to understand what content can do what on this platform. Now, this algorithm has one job and it has the job to distribute the right content to the right people. At the same time, it wants to do one thing. It wants to keep you as the viewer as the consumer of the content as long as possible on this platform. It's basically designed to make you addicted. Whether or not this is good or bad is for everyone to decide for themselves. Obviously it has its downsides, but there is a huge opportunity as well, which we cannot just ignore. That being said, if you can understand how you can hook the people and basically create a lot of watch time and a high retention, then the algorithm will love you for that and will push out your content to more people. Because the only purpose behind that is to drive ads. This is the business model of Instagram and many other platforms. It's here to show you ads. So if you as a creator can keep the people on the platform, then obviously they want you to get more reach so you can keep those people on the platform so they can basically show more ads over and over and over and over again. What you should do is you should consume content strategically and analyze what's happening. You should go on the explore feed, on the explore page, and you should scroll down and you should be taking note on what's happening there. You have to completely shift your mindset from consuming to creating, but as well, you need to consume so you can understand the landscape you're in. If you just create and you don't know where attention is, then you are basically dancing in the dark. One thing you should immediately cancel when it comes to reels is to have lengthy introductions. You know, you shouldn't be there and be like, hey, this is me, Steve, I'm a filmmaker and content creator. And you know, in the past I have been like, nobody cares. 
literally they will be gone within two seconds they need to get triggered with curiosity or instant value people do not stick around longer than two seconds if they are not hooked within those two to three seconds they will move on to the next reel it's an endless feed of new content and if you are not there to stand out then you will basically just create content for yourself and that leads us to tip number two you are the niche you are the niche basically means nothing else then focusing on what you actually care about, where you are good at, and merge that together with your authenticity and rawness. I see many creators struggle because they do not know what to create. They have been told that they need to niche down and stick around in a certain niche for a very long time, if not forever. And that's basically their brand now. And you know, that worked in the past, but with all those polished personas we have been seeing over the last 10 years, it became more and more attractive now that people actually show up as themselves and share something that only they can share. So you have to break that belief and that restriction that you need to stick to one specific niche. It is important that you have a skill or something to offer in terms of value, but you do not have to niche down on one specific you know topic or subject and then stick around there forever basically there are many examples when it comes to personal brands i'm just gonna call out the most famous one and most obvious ones which is you know elon musk he is an entrepreneur somehow a genius he's interested in cars in the car industry and then at the same time he wants to you know travel to space so he has a lot of different interests and obviously he's one of the biggest if not the biggest personal brand but that just shows what a personal brand can be made of same goes for my personal uh, favorite gary v he's also an entrepreneur but also he is flipping baseball cards in his free time and he is interested to buy the New York Jets at some point. So that's his mission. So he has like this story that creates this whole personal brand that makes it interesting now for someone to relate with him. Someone can now relate because he's a Jets fan. Someone can relate maybe even because he is trading baseball cards. And another one is Tom Noski, who is also huge in this space by now and you know keeps growing what makes tom tom is basically he has that filmmaking skill he knows how to make business online and he is also an endurance athlete and that's something people now can relate with maybe there is another endurance athlete out there and now he gets very inspired by tom because that's their connection that's where they can you know talk about something they have both and interests in. And this is how you need to think about your own personal brand when it comes to really linking interests that can attract certain people because at the end of the day, we are people and people like people. They want to connect. Long story short, learn from those brands. Learn from the biggest ones out there because they already had success with it. So you can really go and try to understand how they distribute content so you can form your own personal brand and your own niche. The next step here would be, you need to identify your interests, your beliefs, your values, everything that makes you you, put that on a piece of paper and define which one of those interests is the strongest one. And that's where you should focus on. That should be your main pillar where you create the most content around. Doesn't mean that you cannot bring the other interests into the equation, because that's what we just talked about. That's important for the personal branding aspect, but you need to be an expert, or at least you need to understand something where maybe someone else doesn't have that knowledge yet, so you can show them and teach them something. An example here would be, maybe you are into dogs, and at the same time you like to cook, and a third interest would be that you like to travel. Now, which one of those three 
is the one you think about the most. Is it the cooking? Is it the dogs? Is it the traveling? If you can identify that, you're already miles ahead because now you know where you should make your main content. Let's say your main interest is cooking. That's your main pillar. That's where you want to make content now. The good thing is now, because you are also into traveling, you can combine those two. And you can even bring along your dog. You know, you go into the nature, you create some kind of nice setup and make a fire and then bring a pot and just cook something, document it, teach the people and bring in the dog as well. You know, just have that aspect of uniqueness where people be like, hey, I remember that person. He or she is always outside, nice scenery, cooking something delicious and that cute dog is showing up once in a while. That's something people can relate with but also it is, it's very inspiring and people will not forget that picture. It's very branding. And this approach right there builds trust and brings so much authenticity. Like if you can just really be yourself, have a camera pointing at you or you don't even need to show your face if you're you know, shy and you don't want to basically be within the video, then just have you know maybe even like an action cam which you put here and then it just kind of like documents the process also do not focus on perfectionism trust me i have been there and i have wasted so much time trying to be perfect which ultimately is only visible to me because perfectionism is subjective nobody ever will be there and be like hey well that person could have you know, invested 10% more effort into this video because now it really doesn't bring across that message. Like nobody will ever see it that way. But you in your process think it's not good enough because of whatever kind of syndrome, you know, the imposter syndrome is real. I myself still have it as well, but it's really not helping you to move forward and actually to become a better creator because volume and the amount you put out helps you to understand what you like, what you dislike and how well certain content works on that platform. And since attention is always shifting, you need to be quick to adapt and not stuck in some kind of loop of perfectionism, which will just drain you and ultimately also lead to burnout. All right, tip number three is an important one and it's about gatekeeping what you want to share. You have to share everything for free. Your entire skill set, your beliefs, whatnot. Anything you are good at and everything you are good at, you need to share on that platform, Instagram, for free. Because here is the deal. We have a website called Google. And if someone wants to know something, they can look it up for free anyway. So if you think you are somehow special and that you can not share something for free because you have a certain skill that you are very proud of, then you will not reach many people and you will not build trust at all. So really make sure to break that mindset of, I need to sell that skill now because I do not want that people know my secret little hack. There is nothing secret. The only thing you're doing is you are not reaching people due to your own silo you're creating. If you go around and actually analyze the content that really works well, then you can quickly see it's valuable content that actually helps people. Of course, there's a lot of shit going on as well and a lot of stupid content being pushed out. I'm not going into that. We are going to focus on the good side, valuable content, something that contributes to society and not drains society. You want to build trust first and you can only do that by stop gatekeeping what you actually know. Bring in the people, get the reach you want by sharing as much as you can about the things you're passionate about, about the things you actually know something about and build that following, build that reputation, build that credibility. And this is ultimately where you down the line can introduce products which people now want to buy because they trust you, because you have given them so much value for free already that they will feel bad if they are not going to purchase your product. They're going to be so happy to purchase your product because they know it's something that you care about and that helps them 
with a certain pain point as well. This is why transparency is so important because the space is crowded. There's a lot of competition going on. You are probably not the only person on the internet who knows how to cook a delicious meal. So combining that with the tip which is covered about you are the niche and bringing in your own perspective and all those other interests in your life, that makes you unique. And that's why people want to stick around. It's not that they haven't had the chance to see this maybe somewhere else, but the way you present it is what they want to see. They like your style. It's not about the information per se, it's about how it is delivered. Tip number four is about commitment. It's about committing to this game. So if you already know that you cannot commit entirely for whatever reason, then it will be very hard for you to actually make it in this space because there is creators out there who take this very seriously and they will outperform you. This is not about sharing your favorite dish in the stories for your family and friends anymore. This now becomes a job. And with a job, you need to stick to certain rules and also certain beliefs. And right now, in this case, commitment is the number one thing. Nothing happens overnight. There is no success story overnight. Building momentum, staying consistent, be patient, and then ultimately have the discipline to also get up in the morning when it's a shitty day and do the work. And I think that's where most people fail. You can be very pumped at the beginning, you can be super consistent for a few weeks or even months, but then there will be a down phase. We always have those phases of ups and downs. It's just natural. And then it really depends if you have discipline. So if you don't have discipline yet, then this will be your biggest test. Always think about the big why of yours, the why that you have created, that's the why that always pulls you. Because motivation can only bring you that far. It's the discipline that decides if you are going to make it or not. And when it comes to content creation, especially on Instagram, you have to be patient. You have to put in the work. You have to outperform the people in terms of how to think and how to analyze certain content and how to produce your own content. and. You just need to be in the game. Most of the content creators who are starting out, they are just looking for that big number of followers. And I also can tell you this, followers don't mean anything anymore. It's only a vanity metric by now. It's all interest-based. Yes, it matters in terms of networking and credibility because people now see that you have been doing this for a longer period of time and you actually know what you're talking about. However, it's not important for your content to perform. You can literally have 10 followers today and you can blow up tomorrow with one single reel. That's how the interest-based economy right now on the internet works. That's how social media works today and that's also how Instagram works, frankly. Never chase that number of followers. Chase and hunt down those posts you're gonna put out. Tip number five is about playing the game. We are in a attention-based economy and this is where you need to focus on. Your content needs to have a certain strategy. And to me, there are three different formats you need to focus on within your own content. One of them I call exposure content, which is responsible for your growth. Then we have community content, which is basically curating and maintaining the ones who are already there and your loyal followers. And the third one is sales content. That's where you actually sell your products with intent. You don't have to hold back. You don't have to be shy and don't have to, you know, be weird about it. You just really use that piece of content, that format, to actually sell the people what you want to sell. However, there is a specific way how you want to distribute those three pillars, balance them out in a way that it makes sense. I call this distribution strategy the 40-40-20 rule. The 40-40-20 rule basically means you wanna create 40% growth content, 40% 
community-based content and 20% selling. It's basically 80% giving, 20% ask. What is growth content? Growth content is the content where you're gonna reach people. You want to basically reach the explore page, reach as many people as possible with that type of content, with that type of format, and you need to also do that with a certain strategy, meaning the length, the music you choose, the, the way you edit those reels, everything around that piece of content needs to be in place in order to have a chance to hit the explore page. And then also that people, you know, share it with their friends, like it, comment on it, save it. That's all kind of the metrics behind this, which you want to hit. And the best kind of way to do that is to really, again, you need to analyze the content which is doing well and which is on the explore feed basically. However, in my experience, reels between five to 15 seconds have the most potential to hit the explore page. And the reason is it's quick, it's snappy, there is some value in there. And if they like it, they will rewatch the video, either because it's looping, because it's that short, or because they're actually very interested in it. And that's now a trigger already for the algorithm, which is going to help you because it's all about, again, retention and watch time. So with that format, you will have a better chance to basically get the viewer to watch your video completely. And then there is the audio. And you know, I don't think audio is that big of a factor, but there is obviously trending music and you should play with them. Like if you see that there is trending music and it doesn't have like millions of posts already, then create something with it. It potentially gives you a higher chance now to reach more people. Community content is the content that serves your followers, the people who are already in your ecosystem basically. And that can be longer videos, that can be up to 90 seconds. And this is basically where you can dive in, show your expertise and build a connection with your audience. And ultimately sales content, straight to the point, you have a product, sell it. Be creative. I think there's a lot of ways how you can kind of distribute that content and lead the people to your products, just make sure it doesn't become the majority. People get probably annoyed by it at some point. So you really just wanna make sure that it's well balanced with growth content, community content, and then sales content. These were five tips I wanted to share with you. The five tips that helped me last year to actually blow up on Instagram. The last thing I wanna mention is if you are serious about creating content, you know, getting into that mindset, and actually connecting with like-minded creators. Then we have our own inner circle. It's called Bulletproof. You know, we have weekly workshops there where you can also see my face again every Wednesday, basically, um, same time. And there is the chance to interact with other creators. You know, we have like different channels where you can really go and deep dive into the topics you are really passionate about and exchange with those uh, creators. There's a link in the description. If that's something you are interested in, check it out. And with that being said, thank you very much for sticking around and you know, hit that like, subscribe, comment, any sort of engagement helps and I will see you in the next one.